Thank you for joining us today for part seven of our beginner series, Building and Researching Your Family Tree. Today, we're gonna to be talking about one of our fa my favorite subjects, newspapers. I'm Bill Buckner, genealogy supervisor of the Genealogy Center. Thomas J. Kemp of Genealogy Bank stated once that newspapers have been sort of the untouched resource for genealogy. It was simply too difficult for genealogists to get into, too inaccessible. Times have changed, and today we see many different databases with newspaper content, um, and we're going to explore what is in newspapers, what type of information you might find. We're going to look at some of the major resources that identify and for accessing newspapers and demonstrate a few of the search techniques that help us uh, find content in newspapers. So what kind of information can you find in an, any given newspaper? As you see, the list is, is varied as well as long, and this is just a sampling of some of the types of information. From letters, what you typically think of obituaries, uh, marriage information, divorce information, but also things like family reunions, passenger lists, uh, slave advertisements, um, sport write-ups, things that identify and, and help us understand the content of our ancestors' lives. Here's an example from my family. Uh, one thing about newspapers is, I know many of you have a pile of old letters or old photographs that you wonder what they're all about. And so, I had this photo of my dad when he was little, dressed up in a tuxedo with his first cousin. And I found the article that described the, uh, the event that was happening, the reason he was dressed up. So look, take photos that you have and look in newspapers, local newspapers to help you identify what those are. Now we, we like to see wedding information from engagements to weddings themselves lots of different information, uh, relationship information, wedding announcements from the uh, full names of the bride and the groom, their parents, uh, the list of wedding, uh, who was in the wedding itself, where they lived, what their jobs occupations would be, would be and where they may be moving to. Uh, this is just endearing letters to Santa. These two examples show the kind of content um, for someone who had an Uncle Joe that was in the U.S. Air Force in France in 1963 uh, to an address and also uh, the content of what they wanted for Christmas, a crane truck, a road grader, uh, makes you wonder if they became a construction engineer or something of that nature later in life. And school events. Uh, every time someone won a science fair, a history fair, or some other event, the paper, typically a small town weekly, uh, even a daily, would list the kinds of items, uh, these events in the paper. They were great filler um, for, you know, documenting your ancestor. And sports. If your ancestor played any kind of sport from basketball, football, track, uh, tennis, golf, just all kinds of sports are typically, they have a whole sports page listed uh, so look for your ancestor's hometown newspaper and see if you can find some information about your ancestor. Special editions of the paper. They have anniversary issues. They have bicentennial editions. Um, look for those special events um, and look for photos that may not be in your typical uh, digital index or in an uh, index in a, in a print form as well. So sometimes uh, you have to really dig a little bit. Uh, in this case, uh, this person, Dr. Rockmore, we have a picture of his home, his, uh, his bu buggy that he used for going around the community and a picture of him and his wife. Criminal cases. Um, our ancestors are not always, uh, maybe something happened that they may have been placed in, the, uh, in jail for some, something or another. Um, in this case, uh, there, this is one we are wanting to explore sometime. Um, Sheriff Buckner uh, and uh, one of my uh, co-workers, ancestor, Joe Rockmore, possibly an ancestor, 
uh, what was that relationship? So there we go. Also look for profile pieces, uh, specials when people uh, had a special interest or a hobby or an occupation. Uh, somebody may have done a write up on that person, and those are just uh, a jewel to find those kinds of those kind of articles. In small town news, the society columns of who visited who and where the people went. Uh, they're just full of these types of details about the lives of people that live there, including our ancestors. I never assume that your ancestor's life wasn't newsworthy. And court cases. So besides criminal cases, there are lots of civil cases. There are um, uh, wills and all kinds of things, especially when you have intestate will uh, without a will itself and you want to uh, get all the people that were listed in the family at that time. And so be on the lookout for these kinds of uh, court cases. And travel. Did you know a lot of hotels listed who uh, was staying at their hotel? Uh, so here we are in a, a Little Rock, Arkansas hotel, and there's a J.B. Payne from Waco staying there at this particular date and time. So sometimes you can find uh, information about where your ancestor worked, where they went for vacation, uh, and give you other clues to look, help you look for additional resources. Now, what is the life cycle of a newspaper? I was created to share the news of the day, um, the week or the day, and not to be a lasting record. Uh, if you call a local newspaper, they're interested in tomorrow's edition, not uh, for genealogy of past issues. That's why they refer you to the library. Libraries purchase these newspapers for their patrons. And over time, uh, had a collection in print. Uh, those, those records in print, then as they started to decay, um, they started looking at ways to preserve them through microfilm. And today they're looking at uh, digitizing those types of newspapers. So look for those in public, academic, society, historical societies, and they can be from local, regional, national, and even global types of newspapers. The scope of newspapers, the audience can be uh, ethnic, could be Czech, German, Jewish, Hispanic. They could be uh, business like agricultural, organizational, whether it's a fraternal group, a school, a particular religious order, order like uh, the Baptist Association, um, also, newspapers uh, specifically deal with certain communities. They may be regional in nature, state in nature, or out of state. So there's all kinds of newspapers, not just your local paper. Now, where are some of the best places to look to access newspapers? One of the basic rules of thumb I always tell people is, if you know where your ancestor lived, then call the local library of that community. Uh, and just ask them, what kind of holdings do you have for the local paper? They are gonna be probably the most um, interested in collecting the newspaper. Uh, and sometimes that's the best result. They may have tell you that they donated their papers to the local university. So then you start looking at the regional universities or perhaps a society like a historical society. The Library of Congress uh, has a site called Chronicling America. Um, and there is the address, we'll talk more in a minute. And it has both digital content and one of the best union lists, a listing of newspapers and who has these papers. Also worldcat.org has a great uh, listing of newspapers. Um, and then don't forget the print indexes and abstracts that have been done over a over hundred years, people indexing newspapers. Sometimes it's even better, best to uh, look at a print index than it is to try to search it, an online database. Now there are multiple different um, online databases of newspapers. They each have a unique set of newspapers. Uh, so sometimes there's overlap, sometimes there's not. Uh, we subscribe to newspapers.com. Um, it's a free subscription for our patrons with a library card and you can access it remotely. Uh, Elefind is another website um, source, Chronicling America again. Genealogybank.com is another example of an online 
newspaper database that you could subscribe to if you wanted. We don't subscribe to that particular one. And the Portal to Texas History, which is a free subscription, it's a great place to find your small town newspapers that have been digitized and placed on this site. Now, newspapers in our collection, so if you called here uh, in Waco, um, we have most of the Waco newspapers in their entire holdings. Um, there are a few exceptions, but we've also worked very hard at providing a regional uh, collection of papers from around McLennan County and the counties that surround us. And so we have uh, quite an extensive collection of those papers that we were able to purchase microfilm of. Um, there's also, we have lots of print indexes in our collection. And we also have for the Waco paper, an online news index of local news stories from the Waco paper from 1996 to the present and miscellaneous dates in the past. So again, uh, just harping on the uh, idea to look for, once you've identified the paper or papers in a particular area, is to search WorldCat, search the local library's holdings for print indexes. By calling the library, they may tell you uh, that they have an online database, just like we have an online index for some of the Waco papers. Uh, so check with the public libraries and genealogy societies. Here's an example of the Waco Daily Examiner from 1885. It's been indexed. Also, when you look at an index, note that it sometimes is just an abstract or a short version of the entire article. And sometimes by looking up the full article, uh, you'll find lots more information. Uh, print indexes and abstracts are a lot more reliable than what we call the OCR indexing used from online newspaper databases. Um, so it's just as, so step one, look for print indexes. Step two, look for online access. Now, Chronicling America has uh, two different things I wanna point out to you. Um, I don't know why they came up with this term, but that's what it is, chroniclingamerica.loc.gov. That's the website. And down here, you'll see a link to U.S. Newspaper Directory 1690 uh, to the present. This is a union list or a master list of all libraries that own uh, copies of a certain title of a newspaper. So uh, even with your local paper, there might be universities uh, several states away that have it or had it for some reason at a university. Also, they have been digitizing out of copyright newspapers uh, and their holdings go from 1777 to 1963. Uh, so they have a good list of, of papers there. We see the uh, Waco Morning News as part of this uh, title. So that's a good source to go to. <clears throat> now the directory itself, this is how it looks. So we put in, we click on that US newspaper directory. We put in Texas, McLennan, and then we just uh, click and we come over here and we see all the different titles that um, have been types of newspapers, names of newspapers and their runs from when they started to when they stopped. And you can click on one of those papers. Uh, in this case, we clicked on the Riesel Rustler, and we see that one of the holding statements is from the University of Texas at Austin. It will list the runs of the paper, whether it's a single issue or uh, from one, one issue to another issue. Um, you have to go, and, and sometimes there'll be notes as to if microfilm is loanable, or you just have to go uh, to that source to uh, look at the newspaper. Elefine.com is a internet website. Uh, it's a single search engine that searches 33 different sites of digital papers. And you can see over here the listing of one of which is the portal to Texas history. Um, and so that's a great site to look at um, because this is our example um, you can, instead of searching it directly, you can search it with multiple other sites and find information about your ancestors. 
Now, newspapers.com is the subscription of newspaper commercial subscription that we, we uh, subscribe to here in Waco. Uh, so to get to it, you would click on first wacolibrary.org. You would click on the learning and research tab. Then you would select history and genealogy subsection. You can also get to it from magazines and newspapers. Um, and then you click the desired newspaper, newspapers.com, library edition. And then you would enter your library card, your barcode, and your four digit PIN number. Now you can, this is a free search, remote search. You can search from home with your library card. Uh, just some basic things to remember in newspapers.com, you can browse newspapers. So you can put in browse or, and go to certain papers and then just page by page, look through them. Or you can put in a search term. Uh, we'll talk more how to search in a minute. Uh, also note that there are help screens and to think there are tutorials and videos to show you how to search in newspapers.com. Now, these commercial databases of newspapers. There's newspapers.com, Newspaper Archive, Genealogy Bank, News Bank. Um, this is just an example of Waco papers. And to see that our decision for newspapers.com uh, was you know, pretty much uh, based on what our local newspaper holdings were in this particular database. But do note that there are other vendors uh, that are out there that you can subscribe to uh, on individual basis or find another resource for that have content of the papers you might be interested in. Now, in searching newspapers, you want to try to use quotation marks around the terms in which you want to, to use. This treats the, the names that you put in as a phrase. And so here is Robert Coates without quotes, we had 6,807 matches, but by placing quotes around it and treating it as a phrase for Waco, we only got two matches. Uh, now you want to uh, always look at all variations and I suggest that you write down the names that you're searching so you don't get confused. So just taking Robert, Robert might be Bob or Bobby. You might have a middle name and put that in. You might have the middle initial and put that in. Um, also, you want to look for uh, what we call nicknames or variants of the name. And so this search was for Marshall Elliott, which did not return really any relevant, relevant searches, but his nickname Big Boy found many. And so think in terms of what you know about the person and what you've learned as you go along and then plug that back into your search. Also vary the search terms. Uh, so if you're searching for an obituary um, and perhaps that person was uh, listed with an association, the, um, the Masons or Alliance Club or some other organization, they may use the term necrology as in part of an annual uh, event. Uh, so for necrology, that's another term. So as you come and learn some terms, you'll be able, as you get better searching, you will be able to place uh, other types of names and other names for things that you normally would see into your search. And don't forget the, the filters are the search tools that allow you to help manage your search. So in this case, you can enter a date range. Also, you can narrow by location. Um, you can also take the listing of the results and put them into either relevance, um, paper order by newest or oldest, or date added to the uh, actual database. Now you see the names are highlighted in yellow. Just note that when you print or save, the yellow uh, goes away, so you don't have to worry with that. Now broadening your search. So this was a search for a murder of Samuel King. And if you start down here and look, there was, uh, this was outside of the city and outside the city of, um, I think it was Waco, yeah, Waco. Um, but we find the article in New Orleans and Dallas and again in New Orleans. And so different papers. And so when things happen that were newsworthy, just like today, uh, one paper will run a story that you saw maybe on CNN or 
uh, Associated Press the next day. Uh, in the days past, one paper would have subscription to other papers and run articles about st stories of interest to their readers. Um, so one thing you should always do is to look for all variations of a story because one newspaper may have only had two inches to fill, another one may have had six inches and, and ran the whole story. So once you find a story, plug that story in and try to find it's all the variations in that particular story. You also always want to evaluate. If you know me and I'm always saying evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. So this is a, an a, a article um, in which statements about William Kruger when he died one day after his 90th birthday, his wife preceded him, uh, lots of content here. And so if you start reading that and analyzing it, evaluating it, you're going to come up and say, what day did he die? What day was he born? And what day did he marry from this story? Well, by doing a little math, you come up with those dates. And lastly, uh, some things to remember. Determine what newspaper covered the location of your ancestor lived and what libraries may have had those papers. Remember, calling the public library is a good first choice. Uh, write down all the variations and names and keep a log of those as you search. And when in doubt, ask a librarian. Um, I'll add another one is to always print an article that you find about your ancestor as you find it because it's difficult to search newspapers da databases. Um, you can find it one day and search for a week the next and not find it uh, just because of the uh, algorithms and things that you're coming across uh, may change from one day to the other. Just uh, so print when you find it, save it when you find it, and you'll be a whole lot happier. Um, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to call us at 750-5945 or you can email us here at the Genealogy Center. Our next, our next segment will be on uh, everything about the census. Uh, so stay tuned for segment eight, and we thank you.